Hey everybody, John with Freshwater Systems here. And in our series of answering frequently asked questions, today we're talking about membranes. What is a membrane filtration system? Well, any filtration system that uses a membrane is in that category. And membranes take on a couple of different configurations. There is a reverse osmosis membrane, there's an ultrafiltration membrane, and nanofiltration membranes. And they all approach process a little bit differently. How does membrane filtration work? Well, the membrane technology can differ. For example, reverse osmosis applies pressure to this membrane, and the semi-permeable membrane is only going to allow the water molecule to pass through, and it flushes the dissolved inorganics to the drain. So it's separating the water into two pathways. Ultrafiltration doesn't uh, separate the water like a reverse osmosis membrane. It actually is just a really ultra-fine particulate sediment filter. Uh, so by mechanical filtration, the tiny particulate down to 0 0.025 micron cannot get through this ultrafiltration membrane. And nanomembrane technology works very similar to reverse osmosis, except that it's not quite as fine in rejectant. What's the difference between RO and UF? Reverse osmosis and ultrafiltration differ quite a bit. Reverse osmosis is actually able to reject dissolved minerals from the water, where UF is only dealing with things that are solids or particulate, even though they're tiny, tiny, tiny. So the reverse osmosis is able to get out dissolved inorganic minerals. UF will let them pass through. What are membranes made of? Membranes can be made of a couple of different types of materials. It's actually film technology. And predominantly in reverse osmosis, they're referred to as thin film composite. The, the other older fashion of reverse osmosis membrane was cellulose triacetate or CTA. Those are virtually been obsoleted. They were the first to come out. Um, they had a very small pH tolerance, didn't make a lot of water per square inch. And then along come thin film and we were able to really make a lot of water in a less space. We were able to get bigger membranes in smaller housings. So really revolutionized the style of membrane we use in reverse osmosis. UF uses the same kind of material. It's just formulated a little bit differently. How often should you replace the membrane? That's a great question because a reverse osmosis system, depending upon the water quality, that could be an every two or three year replacement cycle. Uh, as it's rejecting mineral content, slowly some of those minerals will come out of solution and start to clog the surface area of the membrane. If we have uh, a softened water, for example, that feeds the RO membrane, then it's going to last possibly five years or more, providing that you keep the filters replaced on a, on a regular basis. UF membranes, it's a little bit different. These are collecting in, uh, contaminants as it filters. And typically a UF membrane for a point of use application, you're going to replace that probably every other year. How do you clean a membrane? Well, you really don't in a residential point of use size. The, the, the way that you would have to flush or clean the membrane would be using chemicals to dislodge some of the scale or things that are clogging up the, the reverse osmosis membrane. So it's really not cost effective to try and clean the membrane or flush it uh, as opposed to replacing it every few years. Uh, in terms of flushing it on startup, you always should flush uh, either membrane for a few gallons to make sure that uh, everything's working properly. How do you flush a filtration membrane? Uh, a UF uh, membrane is, is a flow through, it's not a separation uh, membrane technology. So flushing it on startup, all you're doing is kind of getting the air out of it from manufacturing. A reverse osmosis system on a startup, you're going to want to flush it to help resaturate because typically they're, they're manufactured and then they're dry. And you're going to want to resaturate the material. 
Typically on a point of use system, you're going to want to fill up two or three tanks of water and let them dump to drain before start, you start using the system. What does fouling and scaling mean with a membrane, a filtration system? Scaling and fouling uh, reverse, uh, refers specifically to reverse osmosis systems. And as that membrane is pulling water molecules across the membrane and allowing the minerals, the dissolved minerals to flow to drain, eventually some of those dissolved minerals are no longer dissolved and they start coming out of solution as we say and it will start to create scale kind of like when you boil water and you get that white ring around the the pot that's minerals inorganic minerals that are coming out of solution and creating scale well you can imagine what that membrane surface starts to look like after we start transporting that water molecule through the membrane and leaving those minerals behind so eventually it can scale if our ratio of water to drain to water through the membrane, that permeate rate, isn't good, if we got not enough water going to drain and too much water going through the membrane, that scaling issue can, can happen very, very rapidly. And a lot of times we'll get a call from a customer that says, hey, this membrane only made water for a few months and now it doesn't make anything. We'll, we'll do some troubleshooting and figure out that the flow to drain wasn't adequate and the, the system scaled, the membrane scaled up. Well, that same thing happens under the term fouling. Now, instead of inorganic minerals, we're talking about bacterial, inorganic um, um, living organisms and so forth that start to slime, if you will, the, the raw side of the membrane, and it will shut it down just like scale. Well, that's all I've got about membranes. Um, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and check us out on our website, freshwatersystems.com. <music>